Kill confirmed. All right, how we doing, folks? It's your boy, Marcos, here. A little special video dropping for you guys. Got to talk about that Call of Duty ghost that happened yesterday, man. If you haven't watched the uh, the trailers and all that good stuff, man, make sure it's probably all over YouTube. It's probably all over CallDuty.com, all that other stuff. IGN, whatever the hell you looked at, man. You've probably seen a ton of it. But let's go over what we saw, man. There's, there's a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff thrown at us. And that's the first thing I want to start off with. I was pretty impressed by the presentation itself. They start off, you know, throwing the numbers, you know, the, the big 100 million people play this year, 10 million people play every day. Yeah, those are pretty cool numbers. I don't care. I ain't seeing none of that money, so it don't really matter to me. Um, but I'm glad, you know, the game's still getting support. And it's a beast. It's, it's, I don't even know how other games compete with it, but we'll talk about that later. And then they just went through like an hour-long ordeal, like 40, 45 minutes worth of, like, explaining everything. And I thought it was great. I was expecting, you know, a trailer. Uh, a couple of teasers over here, and that's it. But nah, they gave us the whole shindig. So I was really happy about the presentation itself. All right, well, I jotted down a couple things when I was watching it that I wanted to talk about, I wanted to point out and give my opinion on. Custom classes, and hear y'all opinion on either too, man, because my opinion really doesn't matter, man. I, I'm one person. Y'all are 1,556 billion people out there. So y'all opinion matter a little bit more. Custom classes. Customizing to the point where, like, you could pick, you know, the character. You could make a male or female, which is a very nice touch at the end of the video, how they show you that's a chick. Everyone's like, oh, I didn't really know that big of a deal, but I I could see I could see why it's a big deal. Uh, you know, so customizing the look, the, the amount of just guns and everything. I mean, there's just screens. I haven't looked at them yet in detail to see exactly what they were. But the amount of perks, guns, and who knows if they're all new, who knows, I mean, there's, there's got to be some new. You know, the fact that they have, I think it was Marksman, the whole, like, new gun, like, class, everything. Uh, it was, wow, I, damn, like, it, it honestly looked like Call of Duty on steroids, um, which I think is a good thing. I think it's a very good step for the series. Uh, it's working. Like, you know, there's a lot of people that don't like Call of Duty. Fair enough. There's a lot of people that hate it. When you have success, people are going to hate you. It's part of being successful. If you'll hate you, people hate LeBron James now because he, like, won championships. All right, whatever. Um, so you're going to have those haters, and I don't think that's the audience you're trying to appeal to. You're trying to appeal to the guys you got now. What more, what better can you give those guys now that's saying, all right, we're going to introduce some new things, but we're also going to do the same thing we always did except, like, a thousand times more. And in that realm, you know, they have that squad mode that they showed. Where you could play with like different AIs and stuff like that. It kind of seemed like, uh, like Clan Wars meets like uh, meets combat training on like steroids. So it's, it's gonna be interesting. I think it'll be a good. Uh, I don't think it's gonna outplace um, you know multiplayer or substitute any of our favorite uh, game modes. But I think it'll be a nice change of pace thing. And I think a lot of the things that they show in this were a lot of good change of pace thing. You know, maybe one night instead of going to play that, we'll play uh, we'll play some squad mode, mess around with that. Uh, the second screen part, you know, where you can take it all over the place and all that. That's whatever. And I think, you know, the metagame that they announced with the clan was one that might be a little bit more interesting. Um, and I'll use it on occasion. Like, I use the Elite app, like, once every, like, two months when I, like, just feel like looking at something. When someone asks me for, like, the name of a gun, I'll look at it. But aside from that, it's just there because I, I, I mean, it ain't hurting me, so I'll just keep it. Um, so Assassin's Creed functionality, that's, that's something you hear and that's something they made a big stress about E3, a lot of a lot of gaming companies. Uh, you know, everyone wants to get onto the tablet, everyone wants to get onto your phone, everybody wants you to take it out. It's more than just the game, it's the whole, like, experience. Like, it's more than just playing the game inside your console. We want you to experience it, to live it, to, to have it with you at all points. I think if any game's going to be able to do it, it'll probably be Call of Duty just because it's... Call of Duty does kind of surpass your normal game, just the amount of usage that it's had, the amount of weight that it kind of carries. I mean, Eminem, like, dropped, like, his, like, new song during, like, the trailer. Like, you don't see that happen for, like, Kingdom Hearts. Like, it's just, there's a whole different, like, level of entertainment. I mean, this thing outsells movies, it outsells Hollywood, it outsells other games. I mean, if I'm another gamer, I don't know how you compete with them. Like, Titanfall, it looked really cool. Yeah, most gamers are probably, you know, they're like, oh, it's great, man, I can't wait for it. Yeah, it, it ain't even gonna touch, like, duty. Hopefully I'm wrong. I don't really care. I don't have any stake in it, so whatever. I just want to play some fun, entertaining game. That's one thing that they try to emphasize was fun. Very happy about that. Audio. I thought it was really cool how they dedicated a little portion over there to that. I'm a big audio guy, so I, I, I appreciated it. Um, but, you know, just showing you how different things sound. I'm not too sure about the extra call-outs, you know, where the guy tells you he's up in the restaurant and all that. Oh, I just... In theory, it sounds really good, but in practice, I think I'm just going to be pissed at my character shouting because the same way that you're going to be able to hear them, they're going to be able to hear you. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, the most important thing that I heard and that I saw that I'm still curious about 
And then I've heard positive things about the controls. I think Call of Duty, the most underrated thing it has is the controls. It is a game that runs on perfect controls. It's I can't think of an SP, FPS that has better controls than Call of Duty. It kind of redefined that. And that's one of the major points of success for the game. It's smooth to play and it's smooth to get used to. Yeah, you got your quirks, you got your drop shots, you got your jump shots, all that nonsense. Um, but for the most part, you're able to get from point A to point B in a very sensible way and shoot and at will and point and accuracy. And so I think, in theory, it looks really cool, the sliding, the leaning on the wall, you know, like poking your head out and stuff like that. I've heard it runs pretty smooth. Like, for example, the lean where you kind of like head glitch off the side. I've heard that you don't even have to hit a button. You can just go on to and your character does it automatically. The slide looked really cool, looked really smooth. Uh, I'm sure once we get used to it, we'll be able to pull it off smooth as well. I'm, I'm always in favor of making the game smooth and again, point to point quick. I'm very big in the mantle thing when they show you that you could climb over things faster. Oh my god, I almost, I've, I've been crying for that for years. Just, please, just let me get over this point A to like this little wall right here a little bit quicker. Like, I, I can really appreciate that. So hopefully the controls, although they're different, will take a little bit to get used to, but yeah, I'm willing to cope with that difference if it means that we got a more fluid uh, gameplay experience. Some of the new game modes that they showed, Cranked, looks pretty dope. We'll see what happens with it. I mean, it's it's very, you know, infantile until we actually play it and see. Uh, but the, the idea looks cool. Uh, the maps in general were kind of the one negative, I thought. It just looked Infinity Ward-ish, man. Just dull with, like, a dull color palette. There was, like, a jungle map that looked kind of cool. looked a little bit lively. Um, the snow map looked a little bit, but, like, the the, the the map where they played or, like, the COD, like, professional and the Marine guys played, that looked just kind of, uh, um, And it, it just, I mean, it's just Infinity Ward. For some reason, they got this, like, just sad color scheme on them. Um, hopefully, they're not all like that. Hopefully, I'm wrong. But that was kind of one little uh, anecdote that I didn't really like about it. And also, you know, the console releases. I was really expecting them to drop a bomb that, you know, that they were going to release simultaneously. And they still haven't announced when they're releasing the Xbox One and the PS4, so maybe they will. Um, but uh, I did hear that GameStop, I don't think they will, but GameStop, I think it, uh, my boy Jay told me they'll be able to buy this generation and then for 10 bucks get next generation. It's a ripoff, you know, it's $10 that you could probably save, but at least it's only $10 and not like another 60 bucks, whatever. And the DLC is carrying over, so that's kind of cool too. So let me know what you guys thought about Ghosts. Hope you all have a great one. Thanks a lot for watching.